is a front and a back, okay, front and a back piece, and you cut them both in mirrors. So you should have two fronts and two backs, okay? So we cut two backs, we don't need that. The front we're gonna use to cut our pocket. So I did not cut the pocket piece that was included with the um, pattern. I did cut the neck binding as directed, so I have two of these long, sort of thin strips, and I am using sweater knit from a mystery box from Sincerely Riley Fabrics. And I've put the link for you in the description of this video because it's my favorite place to buy sweater knit. My cabinet is actually way too full of sweaters and my closet's full of sweaters. So I just keep sewing with it because it's so cozy and the fabric is just amazing. So another edit that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to add tight cuffs and make them a little bit longer so it's a full sleeve. So if you click through to the pattern, which is in the video description, you'll see that it's kind of loose, open sleeves about three quarters. So I'm going to make a longish cuff, okay? So this is gonna be my cuff length, and I'm going to um, cut it so that it's tight. So I haven't cut my cuffs entirely yet. I've just got them cut the width or the length, and we'll cut the width after we get sewing um, on the project. So you can see that's another um, little change that I'm gonna make. So we have our neck binding, we have the cuffs cut, and I, and we have front and back, and I cut one pocket. Okay, <laughs> like where did it go? All right, so here is what I did to cut the pocket. So this is the front, okay, and here's the front bottom. This is the side seam, and this is the, um, you know, center. So, Again, we, the right side of the fabric is going to be out, so you wanna make sure when you cut this that the right side of the fabric is facing up on your pattern piece. Um, so you can decide how tall you want, you know, how high up you want your pocket. I'm gonna go for a pretty large size pocket here, so I've cut it, um, you know, a good distance up the side of the pattern. And then, because I don't really know how she made those pockets, um, I lined up the bottom, okay, so the bottom is the same, the side is the same, but I cut the top because I really want to emphasize this gathered side here. Here, let me put this down a little bit more. I really want to emphasize that the side of the pocket is gathered, so I cut the inside side seam on an angle, okay, so you can see how that side over here goes up several inches higher. And then what we're gonna do is we'll gather that side, hem the top of the pocket, right? And then we'll hopefully have a large pocket with a gather on the side. So, so I have just set my um, sewing machine to a long five millimeter gathering stitch and I'm gonna run that along the long side of the pocket that we just cut to gather that up. But I really think I should thread the needle first. That would help. <laughs> Guess I forgot that little, and then of course it pulled up. Forgot that little step. Pretty important. I would assume you all agree. Okay, so now take two, we're gonna run a gathering stitch down the long side of the pocket. So we can gather it up to be approximately the same, if not a little bit lower, because maybe we will have it kind of slant down from the other side. And I'm not going to gather all the way, all the way to the top because we're going to fold over that top for a hem. So again, totally experimenting here on um, how we're doing this. Okay, so. We've run a gathering thread along that side. And now I'm just sort of pulling on the bobbin to gather it up. 
and we want it to be about the same, or I'm maybe gonna have it slightly smaller than the other side. Okay, so when you get it about the same, even if the gathers are not even, you can go ahead and tie your threads off so that it won't gather anymore. And then that will give you a chance to um, then even out the gathers. Oops. Okay, and I'll show you in a minute um, what it looks like. Okay, so now I've gathered that side of the pocket and I'm just going to sort of slide the gathers around, along, and make them fairly even along the side of that pocket. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with the other pocket, other side of the pocket. Again, I'm leaving about an inch at the top. Why does my needle thread keep pulling out? Um, leaving an inch at the top where we will hem it. Oh, you know why I was thinking, it's an automatic thread cutter, it shouldn't cut it too short, but I cut the thread. I didn't let it do its thing, which probably makes sure it's exactly the right length. I wanted a long tail. Okay, so gathering and then we'll pull it. And this time I can use my other one as my guide for how much to gather it so that I hopefully make two pockets that are gathered the same width. Now, also when I was thinking through this, I also, the bottom of the um, sweater is just um, turned up in a hem and it doesn't look like hers, I don't know how the bottom of her sweater works, so I am just going to leave, um, sorry can't measure and speak apparently. I'm just going to leave the bottom edge raw and then when I hem up the um, whole sweater, I will include the bottom of the pocket in the hem, which also means that, you know, about a half inch or three fourths of the pocket will be turned up and then a stitch will be run across it. So that will be shortening what I can add. Okay, so um, we will go from there. So hopefully that's not the school nurse calling with a sick child. <laughs> okay, so now I have the um, pockets gathered and we will take the fronts, which the front of the pattern does not have any um, neck cutouts. It's just a straight. The back has a little bit of a neck cutout, which I'll show you. Um, in a few minutes. So now we're going to lay the front of the cardigan down and then we have to find out which one, which side goes where. Okay, just to double check that this looks super cute. Okay, so I think that looks great. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hem the tops of the pockets. Okay, so now I'm just folding over about uh, probably three-fourths of an inch. And, uh, I don't know, before Christmas, I was sewing sweaters and my cover stitch, the threads kept skipping and I changed my needle because I thought that was it and I was so frustrated and then I saw someone mention in a group about how her cover stitch didn't like a certain thread which is strange because you know I'm almost always using the same thread but I thought well it can't hurt so I changed my thread and voila it was fine so you know weird okay so 
Here's the top of our pocket now with the hem and the back of the cover stitch also finishes that edge so we don't have to worry about the sweater knit fraying. If you're just using a stretch stitch on a regular sewing machine um, and not finishing the edge, I would suggest finishing it with the serger um, or like a zigzag so that it doesn't fray because sweater knit is one that a serger is super, super helpful um, be just because of the fraying factor. Okay, so now we are going to, let's see, I think I just want to tack, do I want to tack it on before I sew the side seams? Or do I just want to sew up the back and then put this together? Okay, so here's the back of the sweater and I can tell because it has a little neckline here. Okay, and this, it has a seam down the back, um, mostly for a design feature, but also it just helps the drape a little bit on this um, sweater. So, and you could make this from, um, obviously I'm making it from sweater knit. It'd be interesting to try it out of like sweatshirt fabric as well and see how that worked. It, you know, does seem to work best with a drapier fabric. Um, so I'm just sewing down the back. And the seam allowance is included on the pattern. Again, if this isn't a free pattern that you've tried, I would highly encourage you. The fit is super forgiving and so is the sewing because it's actually a really super basic two pattern pieces. So um, if you're just wanting a, to try a knit or a sweater pattern, this one would be super easy. And I mean, you can mess it up. I won't say that you can, but definitely harder to mess up when it's just got such a loose flowing look. Okay, so now there is the back. It will need to be pressed, you know, just to get it to lay perfectly, but we've got a nice start to the back of our cardigan. Hi, Sue. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to pin on a pocket and then um, sew up the side seams to one half of the front. So. I'm just going to grab my clips here and I'm going to match this inside corner and edge along here. We will sew this side later, so we're just sort of holding that. We're also going to sew the bottom later when we hem it, so I'm just going to add a few clips to sort of hold it in place. What we are going to sew right now is this side seam, okay? If you're looking for these clips, they're my most favorite sewing tool. And um, you can find them in my Amazon shop, which is also in the link of the description of this video. So if you missed the beginning, I was saying how I'm taking my women's cardigan pattern, which um, normally has sort of an inside pocket, and adding this sort of large oversized pocket on the outside with this gathered edge. And this was one I was inspired by a photo that I saw in a um, fabric group. And you can see that photo after I finished because I sort of showed it. Um, but I just, I couldn't figure out how to upload a photo. So if I finish, figure out how to upload the photo, I will add it. Um, to the comments, but I don't know. I went to go upload a photo and I couldn't get one. I couldn't figure out how to add one. But I know I've uploaded a photo. So the other thing is if anyone has any suggestions of how to add a photo to the comments, I don't know. So now I'm getting down to where I'm going to have three layers where that pocket is. So I'm just gonna make sure that, um, and because I've gathered it, you know, it's a little bit thicker, and I'm gonna put extra clips, even though I don't usually like to pin so much, just to kind of keep everything together. 
And right now it looks like the back is a little bit longer, but we can always sort of ease that. Um, I know, Sue, the clips have been life-changing. Okay, so with the sides together, we're sewing up the side seam of the women's cardigan. Again, free pattern, you can download it using the link to the post in the comments of this video. It comes in sizes extra small to extra, extra large, which is, I think, about a 22, but don't quote me on that. I'd have to go back and look. Have to go back and look. But again, the, the sizing is super forgiving just because of the shape and the flow of this pattern. Okay, so now I'm getting down to where I'm gonna try and sew the gathers in as well as the side seams. And I guess if I have any exposed gathering stitches when I'm done, I will just um, clip those. And it also does not have a lot of stretch right now with those gathering stitches in it because they're pulled tight. But once we cut those, then the side should have um, stretch in it. Oh my goodness, so cute. And it kind of hangs just like hers did in the picture, which is, you know, where the top kind of hangs down. But we have the cute gathering on the side. And then we will enclose those later. So that is actually super fun. Love it. Hi Priscilla, we are making this cardigan from a free sewing pattern and you can check out the pattern by clicking the link in the description of this video. It will take you to one that looks slightly different than this because I am adding a couple of fun extra features to this one including a longer, tighter cuff and you'll notice in the picture of the original um, post, it's really loose on my arm. And that was the intended look, but I'm trying it with a tight cuff on the cardigan. And then I'm also putting this fun, large oversized pocket with a gathered edge. So that is what we are making. And I'm now going to in the second side seam of the cardigan. And normally I would pin at my cutting work table and then come over here to sew, but I don't want to make you dizzy by putting the camera back and forth. So I'm just trying to push my machine out of the way and do the pinning on this table. This is a pretty thick um, sweater knit, this gray that I'm using, and then the green is a bit thinner and it's a rib sweater knit. They're both from a Sincerely Riley mystery box, and I've given you my affiliate link for Sincerely Riley fabrics in the description of this video because it is my most favorite place to buy sweater knit and at a great price because she often has. Um, boxes and bundles and usually it comes out to be about five dollars a yard which is fantastic for such gorgeous thick um, sweater fabric so anyway that's what I'm making so now we're gonna sew that second side seam also make this without any pockets and then of course it would be an even easier sewing project. Um, if you don't have a serger, sewing with sweater knits is going to be a lot trickier because it often likes to fray quite a bit, um, especially when you're washing it. So um, you have to finish the edge with a pretty heavy duty zigzag stitch, which sometimes I know it gets hard not to stretch it out. So just something to keep in mind, but if you do have a serger, um, go to town. Sewing sweaters is fun. 
when my mom was out to visit in October, she was saying, all your, you've made so many tops. And I really have made myself quite a lot of um, tops in the last year. And so everything I wore when she was here was homemade. So I love it. All right, so let's take a look at the second one. That pocket is also looking super cute. Okay, it's not finished, but gathered on the side, sort of a large droopy pocket and just gonna be a comfy, cozy cardigan. So the next thing that we need to do is sew up the top, the shoulder seam, if you will. But before I do that, maybe I'll add the cuffs. Um, because that will just be easier. So here's the open sleeve. Now I want to, where did I, what did I cut for the, oh, here. Um, I want um, it to be pretty tight. So the first thing I need to do is measure my wrist and see what would a pretty tight cuff look like. It would look like this, and yes, I can easily stretch that to fit. So I'm going to cut slightly longer because of seam allowance. One cuff, and then I will do the same thing as the, for the other one, so they're the same size. And then we take the cuff and we fold it with the wrong sides together so we have a nice edge with the finished um, with the folded over cuff and then I like to pin both sides when I'm doing a really stretchy one and then stretch it and try to pin it or clip it in the middle finding where the middle is. And then you just sew and stretch as you go. Oh, it looks like my husband just brought my son home. He is not feeling well. Okay, so that is one sleeve, and then we're gonna do the other right here. So we will fold over the cuff. Hey, sorry, I was doing I was doing my show. Yeah, I know. Okay, so Max can just go lay down. Did he throw up again? Or he's just no, not feeling well. But he's running a low grade fever. Okay. Really low, but enough that yeah. she wanted to send him home. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Hey, come here, husband. All right. So then we have the two um, cuffs clipped on. And we're going to, as we sew this, we're going to stretch it so that it pulls and gathers that edge of the sleeve. And I'm hoping this is a really, another really cute design feature that we're adding to this card. Okay, so because I measured my wrist, it is a really gathering up the end of this cardigan. There's not a lot of extra stretch when we put that in there. But there is some, and you can see how cute that looks end. So hopefully, thank you, Sue. Hopefully, when we do that, it's a great length and a really fun end to the sleeve. So now I gotta find the other sleeve. And we're gonna stretch and sew the other side. There's the other cuff. So now we can sew up the shoulder seam. And because we just did the cuff, I'm actually gonna start at the cuff and then you end sort of up here at the neck. There's like a little 
bump where the front and the back intersect, okay? And then that is the um, shoulder seam of the thing. Yes, so my cuffs, Priscilla, are the same as my pockets, and then the neck binding is gonna be the same. So I'm just, the gray is mm, not the most fun fabric. So I'm just trying, but I have a lot of it. So I'm just trying to spice it up with some pretty green cuffs. The green fabric is also a little bit lighter weight than the gray. It's, the gray is a pretty thick. So we're just adding some different dimensions to the project. also add no cuff if you just you know turn it over and hem it so all right so there's where our neckline sort of comes together and now we have one sleeve done which looks super cute and I need my darning needle to let's see if we can get a little bit you guys can see a little bit better it's nice and sunny out today um, Finish this right here. Okay, so I have this loose serger thread and I wasn't able to backstitch because it's a serger. So again, I just like to take this large darning needle and pull the loose threads back through my seam. And that just gives it a nice finished look. Okay, so there's one cuff, and now let's do the other shoulder seam. So again, I'm starting sewing at the end of the cuff and then up to the neck shoulder. So I'm really hopeful that this is going to be Cute. And fit well, <laughs> you know, all the things we hoe. <laughs> but so far it's coming together well, I think. Okay, so now we have the main sort of um, cardigan put together. The shape, the general shape is assembled. Okay, and we have to now add the neckband and hem it, okay? So it looks so cute. Okay, I think the two-tone is a really nice touch. And these sort of longer cuffs, I think, which, you know, gathering it in, I think is also a really different look than what I had um, on there before. So that'll be fun. Okay, so the neck band, we prepare it by taking two strips. So I did not measure the length of the strips, I just measured the width, but I know that one is not long enough. So with right sides together, I'm going to join the two strips of um, neck band. And then this seam goes on the back center um, seam of the back of the card. Okay, and then we, so again, like with the other cuffs, you fold it wrong sides together, 
and then we'll place the seam there. So now I'm working with um, three layers of fabric, which with sweater knit is a bit thick, okay? Um, so, and then I'm gonna take from this back center, I'm gonna pin down the left side and then pin down the right side, keeping the binding folded in half, stretching it just slightly. I don't really want it stretched out, but I do want it to kind of maintain its shape and go with the curves on the cardigan. So I am gonna just pull it and tug it slightly as we go down. Now when we get down here to the pocket, it's gonna go over the pocket and so we need to um, pin that as well, okay? So you can see here we're getting to the pocket part. So I'm gonna undo the clips that I was using to hold the pocket in place add this binding. Now we have four layers of fabric because we have pocket, cardigan, and two layers of binding. And this is way too long because I just cut a strip. So I'm gonna clip that um, there. <laughs> you would not have gotten speeding tickets if you could sew accurately. So I like to sew fast, but I also, um, you know, can sew pretty accurately um, and I don't sew my fingers or anything but no I am not a perfectionist or a so slow sewer because I just like to get things made okay so now I'm pinning down the right side of the cardigan again stretching and pulling just slightly putting the binding, and this binding, like I said, is a little bit thinner than the gray, so I think it's gonna have a really nice drape around the neckline and then down the sides of the cardigan. Plus, it's a really easy way to finish our fabric, because we don't have to hem it. We're just um, gonna add this folded edge and then down past where the pocket is pinned on. Okay, and then clip it off, leaving a little bit of extra in case for some reason we need a bit more. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew from the bottom all the way around the top to the other side, and we will then be able to kind of see a little bit more Here's our upside down pocket. You can see the gathered edge over here. Let's see, here's the gathered edge over here and then the binding in my right hand. All right, so let's sew this up. As I start here at the beginning, I really wanna make sure that I'm catching the edge of that pocket because I don't want any holes in my pocket, okay? so. Um, where I pinned the pocket and the cardigan and the binding, we're just making sure that we really are catching that edge of the pocket so that it's enclosed and then the pocket is, will actually be a pocket. So because I stretched the binding just slightly, remember, I stretched the binding just slightly, as I'm sewing, I'm stretching just slightly so that that binding will then lay flat. If you don't stretch it at all, it might tend to gape just a little bit, especially around the neck. So it will lay nicer if it is just slightly smaller than the um, length of the cardigan. So I just just slightly have to tuck. I mean, so, so slight. And as we get around the other side, then we'll be sewing the pocket again. This time from the top down. And 
and I'll try to slow down a little bit as we're getting to the pocket and adding another layer of fabric. I also like the clips with the serger because I don't accidentally sew over a pin with this knife, which I have done. Not a good sound. Crunch. Okie dokie. Now we have a super cute border on our cardigan. You can top stitch if you want, if you're afraid about how it's laying. You can see here the side pocket, which looks great. Um, Monica, so I'm stretching the binding. The cardigan should not be stretched at all. The binding, this green fabric, which is a little bit thinner, I wanna stretch that just slightly as I'm sewing. Okay, so that's the only one that you wanna stretch. And that just will help to give it a nice shape as it finishes the edge of the fabric. All right, so our last task is to hem this baby. And um, so I'm gonna do it on the cover stitch. I'm gonna fold up about three quarters of an inch. I'm actually going to put some clips here because I have double layers of fabric um, here where the pocket is. So I want to make sure that it's laid nicely. And then the back of my cardigan ended up just slightly longer than my front because I was messing with the shape a little bit. So I'm just gonna ease that off I'll leave the length in the back, but I just need the side seams to match up. Okay, so I'm just going to put a couple clips across the back. Again, the back's a little bit longer, so we're just going to cut it an angle to ease it off. I put the hem in I will hopefully model my awesome new sweater for you and not have a fail did you guys were you guys around um, I don't know it was this fall sometime I tried to make a dress out of like I think it was a sweater knit like a t-shirt dress anyway it was a total fail did not work did not the, fa the fabric was just like too heavy did not lay nice not a good reveal, even though the method should have worked. Okay, so now I have it tucked under. Let me just bring this a tiny bit closer so you can see here on the cover stitch. And we're gonna use this off-white because we've already used it on this project. And I just turned up the binding on the edges, the right and left front, okay? So we're just, that's how we're finishing the whole bottom. And then like the serger, I will have loose cover stitch threads to finish there on the front. Okay, so it's pretty thick here at the beginning because I have binding, pocket, multiple layers. So I just had to kind of shove it to get it started, but it looks good on the back. Probably would also be better if I had a dark colored looper on here so that you wouldn't necessarily see that looper stitching but I didn't think about that until just now so too late and I also am feeling with this finger where that bump of the um, folded under edge of the fabric is and that's how I um, kind of stay sewing right on top of that line. Okay, so now we're about to go back to 
the thick part. Keep all those layers organized, but it seems to be taking it in stride. myself a bit of a tail so I can okay final step final step um, so I can put the um, tie up these loose ends so I'm going to hope to thread them through this one doesn't have a very long tail so let's see if we can get it through. And then I will model for you. Okay, so that pulled through and I'm just gonna pull one, tie it just a couple of times because this is not a very long tail and um, so I'm just a little bit nervous about it unraveling. This is on the cover stitch. I feel like it can unravel if I'm not careful. So I could also put a dab of, I don't know if I have any handy, like a fray stop would um, be really great right there. So let's push this back just a tiny bit. Okay. So now let me, leave it, let me do the other one, and then we will see how it looks. So in theory, it came together as good or better as I could have hoped. In actuality, we won't know until I put it on if it actually fits. All right, so let's give you that view. So I can put it on and give you a full look. The sleeves are about perfect. Oh, you guys, it is so cozy with this fabric. And look at my awesome big pockets. I love it. Okay, oh, there's all kinds of stuff stuck to it, but okay, you can see my pocket here. You can see the gather down the side. I've got two big pockets for stuff. The length is just great for a cozy cardigan, and the neckband lays pretty well. So, you know, you can always top stitch along here if you feel like it's not laying great to sort of help that, but I am very excited about this. It's probably a little bit hard for you guys to see the difference between the gray and the green, but you can see here up close that it is different.